don't got no more shackles. Amen. I want to say good morning to everyone. And happy Resurrection Day. Amen. 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 He is risen. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that is a great place to celebrate. Amen. Yeah. He is risen. Amen. And uh, we are glad that you are here on today. Amen. Are you glad that God has given you another opportunity to come and worship and praise his holy name? I know many of you are wondering, God, Father God, do you know? Father God, do you care? One of my favorite ones, Father God, are you listening? God is saying, yes, I am. I want to say welcome to the City of Restoration Church. We're not a perfect church, but we're progressively pursuing perfection in Christ Jesus. We are thankful that you came today on this resurrected morning, amen, to hear a word from God. We're glad that you are present here physically and those that are by social media. We thank you for being here on today. I want to continue in our series. I know many came expecting to hear a resurrection message. Well, if you listen closely, you'll hear one. Uh -huh. That's right, that's right, come on. That's all. That's all. If you listen real close, you'll hear one. And um, I promise you, if you believe it, you'll experience one. And I know that we are accustomed to hearing things. <clears throat> but it's the, the hearing is only the beginning. There are some other processes, some other steps that we must take by faith besides hearing. And so we know that we're in a series. We started last week. Confession is good for the soul. Confession is good for the soul. And we're going to stay in that series until God says different because I believe that many of us who know the Lord or have known of the Lord and even don't know don't understand the power that's in confession and confessing. So let us open up in prayer. Um, and after prayer, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our young people. Amen. And then um, we're going to go ahead and hear what the Lord has to say. You are at the right time in the right place. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you for the praise team. We thank you for those, Father God, who are excited about giving you praise, Lord God. I love it, Lord God, in your word, how you said that you don't look at the outward, but you look at the inward man. And Father God, I'm going to use this same text that you spoke of, and I'm going to relate it to Father God, our praise and worship. You said anything that we give grudgingly yeah. and out of necessity, they can keep it. That's right. well, you said that you love a cheerful giver. Many times we relate that to money. But what about our service to you? Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are we cheerfully excited to be in your presence today? Are we cheerful about another day, a new beginning? Are we cheerful, Lord God, that the blood is still running warm in our veins? Are we still cheerful that we're in our right mind? Are we cheerful, Lord God, that you're going to speak to us today? That would feed our souls, Lord God. Are we excited today about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? For many, Lord God, it's a reminder but most, Father God, it's introduction. And I pray, Lord God, today that you would have your perfect way today. We ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would teach, Lord God, through this body of clay. And that what you've already established and signed in heaven on this day will come to pass. I pray, Father God, for those who are tied up, locked up, tangled up in sin, 
that this message, Lord God, will show them, reveal unto them, Lord God, the simple solution to experiencing true freedom. So we pray, Lord God, you'd have your way today. In Christ Jesus' holy name we pray, and we thank you. Amen. 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 At this time, we want to dismiss our young people. Y'all show them some love, man. Give the sign now, amen. <laughs> amen. And so, uh, so we're excited once again. It's good to see everybody moving. Do you have your word? Amen. Amen. Give the sign now early in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 through 24. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 24. I, I told you, I share with you that you may not hear the traditional, but if you listen yeah. in the spirit, you look in the spirit, you'll see resurrection. That's right. Even in this message today. Mm -hmm. The book of Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11, we'll be reading from 11 through 24. When you found it, please stand in reverence to God's holy word. Thank you, Minister Coleman. Appreciate you, sir. In the book of Luke, St. Luke, the physician, 15, 11 through 24, word of God says, Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Mm -hmm. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. <clears throat> and he arose and came to his father. And he arose and came to his father. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Here we go. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And it's found, and they begin to be married. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Holy Savior. Verse 24 says, For this my son, he was dead and is alive. Look what he says, people of God, again. Mm -hmm. Again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to party. We like be merry, but we know they party. This morning, I want to speak today from the subject, coming home the right way. Mm -hmm. Coming home the right way. And when you think of that, parents, 
And we've heard our parents tell us that, and you're telling your children. They can come home, but when you come home, you got to come. Are, are we there yet? You just can't come. And you can, yes, I love you, but when you come, you got to come. The right way, don't you know many of our houses or in our homes are shaking and rocking and disarray because we have yet to stick with this standard? You can come home. Right. But you got to come home That's right. the right way. And the right way is God's way. That's right. That's right. And so here we see in Romans, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 15, where the story opens up of a man with two sons. And the younger of the two had become tired of restrictions. Mm. Yeah. They got tired. The young man got tired of living at home. You know, you we've been there. And he wanted to do what? Yes, yeah, spread his wings. <laughs> so eventually we ain't going to have to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Soon Thank and very soon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But he said that he began to spread his wings and because he wanted his freedom. Mm -hmm. He wanted to sow his royal oats. So he asked his father to give him his portion of inheritance. And this is nothing new. Uh, this is nothing new that the parents had always set up an inheritance for their children. Mm -hmm. and this is nothing new. It was something that and I don't want to stick it with the Jews. This even before then, even Gentiles always set up something for their children. But it was something about this story that Luke is describing. He's telling us that. This young man said, I'm tired of living under your rules. I want to go out and do it my way. And if you look at verse 11 and 12 of Luke 15, you'll see it says that then he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods. Look what he says, that belong. The Bible says falls to me, that belong. Isn't this true like us as children? Hmm. We think that our parents right. owe us something. something. As a matter of fact, we, in our times of rebellion and open rebellion, we tell our parents, you're just doing what you're supposed to do. You owe me this. So the father said, I'm not going to argue with you, son. I'm going to go ahead and divide to them his livelihood. Now, I want you to look at the scripture here real slow. Because he said, so he divided to them. Right, right. So, so mm -hmm. even though the young man said he wanted it, the father was fair. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give the older one to theirs too. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to withhold. Y'all going to get this in a minute. Mm -hmm. Even though the young, the young rebellious boy asked, he said, look, I'm going to give y'all both what belongs to y'all. Right. Because guess what he's telling you? You got a choice. Right. And don't you know that we still have a choice? Mm -hmm. And so he says, though it was perfectly within his rights, according to 11 and 12, to ask for his portion, it was not normal for a father to give his portion of the inheritance because normally, people of God, the inheritance comes after that's the right. death. Y'all going to get this in a minute. That's right. That's right. Normally the inheritance comes after the death. So instead of rebuking his son, the father patiently grants him his request. Mm -hmm. Now I can see the father looking at his younger son with some hurt <laughs> and disappointment like God. The father looks at us when we say, Father God, I no longer believe you in you anymore. I'm going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it my way for I know what's best for me. Can't you see the father? I'm just painting a picture for us. The father did not rejoice when the son wanted to leave home. And God does not rejoice when we leave home either. It hurts his heart. That's right. Because he's a father. Mm -hmm. And I can see him looking at his son. Knowing that his son don't know what is ahead of him. And I can see the I can see the younger man thinking to himself, "We've been there, brother Sam. I'm gonna prove 
Mm -hmm. My father wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been there, right? Some of us are still there. Yeah, yeah. That's a stronghold. It's when you right. are doing things to prove mm -hmm. somebody wrong, it's a stronghold. Mm -hmm. But the young man says, I, I know he thinks I'm going to fail, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm going to show him that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Now, Rhea, I know where I'm going. I'm going away from these rules and restrictions because I'm fed up with this house. I'm fed up with this law. I'm fed up with these restrictions, and I want to spread my wings and fly. Besides, Randy told me <laughs> that it's better on the outside than it is on the inside. Oh, yeah. Randy told me that when I leave home, mm. I'll have freedom to make my own choices. I can stay up all night long and fellowship and party with whomever I want to. When I'm on my own, I can make my own decisions. That's, right. That's what Randy told me. Mm. He told me that life is better outside of God's instructions and law. Mm. And he's showing me some things right now. Mm -hmm. That looked appealing to me, so I know what I'm doing because Randy told me. And he is my boy. Oh. <laughs> and my boy, my partner, and my crew, they, they, they won't lie to me. Come on. The son is like many of us today. He is about to learn a hard but valuable lesson. He is about to experience. <laughs> the dangers of doing things his way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. And not many days after. <laughs> not many. Oh, not, not, see, it, look, let me say something with you now. He laughing. See, it, it didn't say many weeks. Son, it didn't say months, years. It said many days. See, it, it, should, it don't take long. And it shouldn't take long for you and I to learn that we don't know much about anything. Mm -hmm. And not many days after the youngest son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and, and many day, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Mm -hmm. Everything that he got from the father that he said belonged to him, he went out and he did what? Listen to his friends. And he went out and just wasted his possessions. And it's amazing to me how we will follow the advice of someone we barely know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I know y'all say, I've been knowing her for 10 years. That's a second with God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been knowing her for 20 years. Well, that's a minute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's amazing how we would, we, would, we would follow the advice of someone we barely know before following the advice from someone who knows us. That's right. That's right. I know you birthed in this family, but let me tell you something. News flash: your parents are not all knowing. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on, say it again. Amen. Say it again. Amen. No, we're not. They only know in part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but God is the one that is instructing them, your parents, to give you godly wisdom and. Godly knowledge and godly instruction, but guess what? It is your choice. Yeah, and so it says that we tend to, Nairi, always follow people that we met this school year. Mm. Mm. You've been living with your parents your whole life, but you find somebody in school that you, that you like or you think like you, and you will take that advice. That's what I did with Randy. <laughs> Because I wanted to be like him. We're laughing, but I'm going I'm to deal with this real slow. Randy showed me a picture yesterday of when he was in AIT. Mm -hmm. Young man. Mm -hmm. Had his shirt, khaki, short sleeve shirt. Those, uh, those of us that was brought up or grew up, you 90 babies know what I'm talking about. 90 graduates. You know the short sleeve shirt, the white t-shirt, and the short pants. And the socks and the boots. And the teams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so listen to what I'm saying. And, and it came out of his mouth. See, God will show you, reveal some things to you that you know. He just talking to me, but I'm like, Lord, what is he saying? Yeah. Says in the message. Randy said, Look, Pastor, 
<laughs> look how foolish I look. Mm. He says, this guy was from Florida. And he convinced me to dress like this. <laughs> he went out and picked what he wanted me to wear. Oh, Listen to me now. <laughs> Listen to me. And he put it on me. He said, well, I didn't know, but guess what? It was, he was influenced, but now that he's older, he realized I never should. He said, look at my picture. <laughs> And God is telling some of us today, you got to, we talked about this last week, you got to start looking in the mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. And seeing how God created you and God had instructed you and want you to look like, when he looked at that picture, he said, man, I should be ashamed of myself and what he was saying because I don't even dress like that. He said, this guy went out and picked his wardrobe so they can twin. <laughs> but, but, but we're going to what he says that it's amazing how we would take the advice over people. It's teaching us how to dress, mm. how to act, and how to respond for people and not seeking the Father. Come on, come on. You're right, say it. That's good. But verse 14 says, but when he had spent it all. In other words, broke. Because <laughs> it feels good, don't it? It feels good when you get your possessions at the first time, yeah. right? But it says, when he had spent it all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in one. In verse 13, we read that he travels to a distant country. Right. So in other words, guess what he did? He left mm -hmm. home. Yeah. He went to a country where the people that were there didn't look, speak, or honor their parents. So in his decision, he found himself associated with people just like him. Mm. Are we there yet? Mm. It's amazing how the enemy will always connect us to people uh, that rebel against their parents too. Yeah, yeah. Talk bad about it's always those people. Yeah, and they're always trying to get you to be like them. In verse 13, we read that he travels to a distant country, and it's evident from his previous action that he had already made the journey in his heart. In other words, that wasn't just, when you read now, it wasn't just his mind to leave home. He was thinking about this, Chrissy, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happens with us. We just don't automatically just leave. That's right. God. That's right. That's right. You said that. Come on now. Come on. It, it, it wasn't just the sermon, and it wasn't just how somebody, you have, we have made our mind up that I don't want to live by these rules and this yeah, yeah, yeah. law and this restriction yeah. of loving my neighbor, of right. praying for one or even repenting. I want to do it my way. My mind has been made up, and I'm just looking for an opportunity. Because yeah. don't you know? He knew that even though he asked for his inheritance early, he wasn't going to receive it as a toddler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he had to wait till he got of age. That's right. Like 18. You ever people when I get 18, I'm leaving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I get, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Sure Don't you wish you could take that back? Yes, up. <laughs> Pride to say, no. Nah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit said, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he says, I've already made up my mind. And, and I said that and the physical departure was displayed of his willful disobedience to all the goodness his father had offered him. And so often we fail to realize what God has already provided for us is enough. Right. Right. You know what I mean? We, 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 because we want more. We're in a, we're in a nation. Right. We're in a time where we want more. We're not, we're not content with just clothes and water and food and shelter. We want more because Randy told me there's more out there right. to be discovered. Right. Yeah. So in the process... He squanders all his father's hard work. Don't you know that the father did that? Mm -hmm. The father worked hard for the inheritance for his children. And I can hear King Solomon saying, I told y'all about storing all this stuff up for your children when they fail to obey. Because guess what they're going to do? They're going to waste it. So he squanders on his father, had worked so hard for on selfish, shallow fulfillments, losing everything. 
He, as a matter of fact, he lost his backup money. Because some of us ride no backup money right now. <laughs> see, 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 backup money won't get you to come. See, see, <laughs> see <laughs> yeah, I got to make a plane, Denise. I got to make a plane. See, some of us are riding on backup right yeah. now. Yeah. In, in other words, Brother Sam, it ain't, it ain't hard yet. It ain't got to yet. See, see, it ain't hard yet. So I will return, but it ain't just hard just yet. And so his backup money was gone. Everything. His financial disaster is followed by a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. So he, not only did he lose money, now guess what? <laughs> According to the scripture, mm -hmm. it says that there was a famine in the road. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how when everything is good and look good, it's, it's... Mm -hmm. but you ask yourself this question, why didn't the famine happen when he had a lot? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's how that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's, that's right. how it's. That's how it rolls. Yeah. See, because when the famine happens and you got stuff, you can just make yourself say, "Well, I can just buy this and a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that." But, it, but, but, but the story said after it, after he was broke, the famine yeah. came. <laughs> so he couldn't buy anything. Mm -hmm. And in verse fifteen says, "So guess what he did? And he would gladly have." So then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mark, what he's saying, I I'm just saying this about this person who left the father's house. Asked the father to give me what belongs to me. He goes out, spends everything that he has. All of his savings and got desperate. And don't you know, in the times of desperation, is when Satan screams the loudest? How many of us have made some bad decisions because we got desperate? Oh, yes. You want you have to say, man, because it's here in the scripture yeah. that he got desperate. And instead of Pride must fall. Instead of going back to the father yeah. when it got desperate, he said, I'm going to show him I can make it on my own. Mm -hmm. So he goes to another. He's in this country. You know, you know them friends that you have that you ashamed to share your faith with? Mm -hmm. But they're not ashamed to talk about all the rituals and all the things and all the gods. That's, right. That's the country that he's in now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know the country of those people that don't believe in your God and don't really believe in a God. They just don't want you to believe it's in your God. God. That's right. That's so they'll right. start heaping up all these other things for you to follow. Yeah. You See, the reason why I'm taken from that plate is because I have left home and I'm desperate now. Mm -hmm. And I just want deliverance from anything. Yeah. And so it says here that he went and joined himself in verse 15 to assist of that country. And he sent him into the field to feed swine. Look what the enemy does to you. See, see, when we join ourselves to other things, people, places, and other things, they, they don't see you as a child of God. Because see, if they recognize you as a child of God, they would do what God going to do at the end of this. But they look at you like, yeah, you go ahead. You ain't even good enough to come even. You ain't good enough to work. Go ahead. And how many decisions? Yeah, I know it's quiet, but I'm telling you, it's freedom time. That's right. How many of us have been, by the enemy, told to go and do something you would never thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you would do? This man had what? Everything. Yeah. But because of his rebellious spirit, he found himself doing something that he thought he would never do. Put a pen there. Stop saying I would never mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. because you don't know That's right. That's right. Uh, what you will do mm -hmm. when things, when you're broke mm -hmm. spiritually yeah. and you become desperate. That's right. That's right. So at this point, he sells himself. Look at this. A child of a, of a, of a very prominent man sells himself into physical slavery to a Gentile. And finds himself feeding pigs. Mm -hmm. 
And we all know that that's a detestable job to Jewish people. You got to understand where we're going here. This young man was Jewish. And because he rebelled against his father, matter of fact, serving and feeding pigs and was a detestable job to Jews, Jewish people. For according to the Mosaic law, swine pigs were unclean animals. But let me tell you something. When you forget who you are, when you rebel against what God says, you'll be doing some things yeah, yeah, yeah. that is detestable to God too yeah. and You're detestable right. to you too. You're right. So to protect themselves from defilement, the Jews would not even touch pigs. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they wouldn't deal with it. So for a Jew to stoop to feeding pigs were great humiliation. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mark, yeah, I know I've been there. I have found myself doing some things I thought I would never do. And he says, and this young man not only fed the pigs, but he got so hungry, sire, this young man was about to eat from the pig's slop. I got it. He got that hungry that he was beginning to eat. He must have been incredibly desperate. At the point to will he enter into such a disgraceful and, dis and disgusting position. He must have been on a low low. Yeah, yeah. See, I told you many of us on, on, on some on some backup right now. And God is calling you right now, but you said, no, I still have a little bit. I, I, I still have a little bit. Matter of fact, when we start thinking like the world, I could take this 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it on the right number. <laughs> Multiply it. I still got a little. As long as I got a little bit, I can take what I got. So let me tell you something. I know what I need to do. Right. Only because I love you. I'm going to cause a famine. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get you and I to a point where you have no other choice but to come to me. That's right. That's right. Amen. And you're right. That's some good news. Mm -hmm. And so verse 16 says, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Yeah. Hmm. Now look what this young man's choice has led him. It led him to a position in which he had no choice but to what? Work. work. <laughs> uh, he had to work, y'all. Now he was at the father's house, mm -hmm. and everything was provided. I told you, I'm ready, I'm ready. get out of here, get out of here, I'm ready, I'm ready. Get out of here. So you just don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know I'm providing for you right now. Yeah. Well, why do you want to go out there? But because of our choices and our decisions and disobedience to the Father, now we got to work. But the problem was not that he worked. He had to work, Ellie. He had to work for someone. He had to work for a Gentile. And I'm saying people that you were told and Trained to realize that you're supposed to be leading you leading them to me because mm -hmm. you're my chosen. So you I place you here to draw the lost to me. Now they're drawing you. Mm. Because you didn't want to live by these rules. Mm -hmm. And so it says that he put him in a position where he had no choice but to work and for a stranger at that, doing the very thing he refused to do for his father. <laughs> Yeah, y'all should laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially you parents. Yeah. You training them up to do this. Clean your room. Take care of yourself. You know, they go out there in the world and they're telling me, you need to be on time when you do this. Yeah, I come in late. You do this, you at the home, got to do all this. You get out in the world. Man said, be at six. You had a quarter to five. Mm. <laughs> they don't have to tell you, clean nothing up. Clean the break room. They got to tell you that. You know you out there doing it. God said, all I ask for you to do is to love me, to obey me. But you're going out there and they ask you to do everything. You're giving it all up for them. And then me, you had everything you needed. To top it off, he apparently was paid so little that he longed to eat the pig's food. Are we there? How many of us are living with just enough? Some of us are living with not enough. Mm -hmm. And so we find ourselves, yeah, 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 I'm taking, I'm going slow. Yeah. We find ourselves 
when things get desperate and hard, we find ourselves doing the same thing. Just when he must have thought life could not get any worse, he couldn't even find mercy among the people that he was cast out to. Can, can you see your friends now? Those so-called friends. That told you that they had your back and they'll be there for you after they enticed you. Randy did entice me out there to go out there and live a life. Because, you know, Randy knew my father. Listen to me. He knew my father had some wealth. So Randy was wasn't concerned about being my friend. He wanted some of my father's wealth. So what he did was he joined himself to me. That's right. To pretend that he was my friend, but there was a hidden agenda behind him. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And I fell for it. And after that, I lost everything. I couldn't find Randy no more. <laughs> Randy used to call and text me all the time. Now all of a sudden, I done got busy. <laughs> yes, he, come on now, every day, go like clockwork. What you doing, brother? How you doing? Let's go here. Let's go there. Everything good. But then all of a sudden, I know God is preaching and talking to somebody today. Come on, come on. All of a sudden, when everything is gone now, you can't. You can't, you can't leech off of me no more. Yeah. You know what a leech does. Jay, you got to get this early, brother. Early! Amen. A leech gets to you. And a leech sucks the blood. Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. And one thing about a leech, you never know, for those of us that have been in the jungle and jungle environment training, you never know a leech is on you. You can go the whole day, the whole, you can take a shower, don't know a leech. The only way you don't know a leech is on you is when someone yes. points it out. And God is saying to somebody today, there's a leech on you. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. And it's sucking you dry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he tells us here that he thought that it couldn't get any worse. Because apparently once his wealth was gone, so was his friends. Mm -hmm. Even those unclean animals seemed to be better off than he was at this point. This is a picture of the state of the lost sinner or an unbeliever or rebellious believer of Christ who has returned to a life of slavery to sin. It's a picture of what sin really does in a person's life when we reject the Father's will. I'm going to go back to that again. This picture represents a person or the effects of a person who fails to obey God, who rejects his instructions. I know you have money now. But you keep rebelling. Mm -hmm. Sin always promises us more than it gives. Yeah. Takes us farther than we want to go. And leaves us worse off than we were before. I'm going to say it again. Sin always promises us more than it gives. You heard Randy telling me how much freedom I had if I would just leave my house, take my belongings, and hang out with them. How he wants to show me the world. Sin always promises more than it gives. It takes you further than you wanted to go. That's many of us right now said, I can't believe I find myself in this situation because sin will take you further. Yeah. Have you ever, are you, have you been there? God is telling you stop, but yet still sin is saying, come on, just a little. Yeah closer. And after we continue to commit to that sin, we become like the sun that starts to eat slop. It does what? It leaves us worse off than we ever were before. Sin always promises freedom. That's what Randy was promising me. Sin always promises you freedom. Sin always says, I can't wait to get out. He said, I'm going to tell you all these things. Sin always promises us freedom but brings slavery. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It always promises you freedom, don't it? Amen. Amen. You better get this, Jamal. It's always going to promise you some freedom. The writer of the song says, how could sin be so fun yet so wrong to man? How could sin be so fun yet so wrong for man? It's fun right now. It's fun. The prodigal son was having some fun, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Come on, don't look at me like I'm crazy. That's right. That's right. Amen. He was having fun, living it up. And that's what the world wants us to do as believers in Christ because they're enticing us now to make us believe that the world 
and serving the things of the world and getting the things of the world is better than being a child of God. But the good news, here come the good news. Y'all ready? Go to verse 17. But when he came to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I mean, come on, somebody need to, somebody need to be praising God right now. Right. Somebody need to be praising, because see, what, what I'm saying, I was growing up, when I was growing up, I, 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 don't, I don't know, if, I never glorify, glamour, glorify and glamorize my old life. But I'm going to tell you something, I'm here today because I stayed in the house when they wanted me to go. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. That's why I'm here. I, I wasn't better, I just heard God. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that, guess what? If I had gotten in there, that would have been it. Uh, the prodigal son was about to do what? More disgrace to himself. Mm -hmm. He was about to do something that would probably what? Cause him to never return back. And many of us have fallen, committed sin so bad that we can't even raise our head. We mm -hmm. can't even pray anymore. Mm -hmm. We can't even read the Bible no more. We don't even want to fellowship with God anymore. That's not religion. That's sin. Because yeah. sin separates us. Yeah. 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 So when I'm in my sin, there's no way I'm going to want to come in and fellowship with God. Yeah. I can do it for a season, but eventually my sin starts wearing on me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He says here, he says, but he came to himself. And he said, I told y'all it's okay to talk to yourself. Amen. <laughs> Some of us need to talk to ourselves. Don't talk to yourself. You can talk, but don't answer. I'm going to tell you something. I talk and answer myself. <laughs> I don't know about nobody else. Because I done gotten some stuff. I'm like, boy, you know you, you, you wrong. And my son said, you know you wrong. You know you wrong. <laughs> you know you wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It says he came to himself. And he said, how many of my father's highest servants have bread enough to, and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Mm -hmm. The son begins to what God is telling us right now. He's beginning to reflect on his condition. He realized that even his father's servants had it better than he did. Mm -hmm. He started saying, wait a minute. Even my father's servants have it better than me. His painful circumstances help him to see his father in a new light and bring hope. This is a reflective of the sinner when he or she discovers the destitute condition of their life because of sin. Mm -hmm. that, that should bring you to your... You shouldn't be able to say, well, no, it's not that bad. This, this prodigal son said, no, it is that bad. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because I realize what I'm about to do now is going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to mess me up. Mm -hmm. I'm at to the point now I'm going to do something that's going to shame me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But he said he came to himself. And he brought to him remembrance of what? What his father had already done for him. And so he tells us here, it is the realization that apart from God, there is no hope. This is when a repentant sinner comes to his senses, or her senses, and longs to return to the state of fellowship with God, which was lost when Adam sinned. I told you some of us are on some backup Blessings. <laughs> Some backup finances. Yeah. God is telling you, come back to me, repent. He said, no, I still got 20. <laughs> and I told you, the world said, you can take this 20. Y'all don't be playing with me. I know y'all don't roll down Vegas. All. Don't, don't play with me on your phone. Yo, I know you're doing it. I'm going to take this 20. And I'm going to invest this 20. That's how they tell you, right? Mm -hmm. What you got? Mm -hmm. How much you got? You got 50? I tell you, I can take that 50 mm -hmm. and make it 500. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't let the white coat fool you. God, that used to be me. What you got? What you got? If you trust one, all I can say, well, I'll tell you what I can do. You take that right there. Yeah. Make five, take five dollars, five. And then what the enemy said the same thing. He said, listen to me. He said the same thing. He's trying to make you think by you giving all to him, mm. you're going to profit. Mm. And we start saying, yeah, can't you use 500? I know you're struggling. But instead of money, we're giving ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so he tells us here, according to verse 17, 
What the son did after he realized that he was better than his current situation, and I'm, I'm going to share this with someone right quick. You are better than your current situation. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. No, no, you are. You are better than your current situation. Yes. I'm going to turn this off, okay? Yes. Is that all right? Amen. I don't want my brother to think it's dinner time. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah. But but what he did was the son, the son, after he realized that he was better than his current situation, the son did what? He didn't complain, Chrissy. Guess what he did? Look what he says. Verse 17. He said, How many of my friends, how many of my father's high servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Guess what happened? He devised a plan when he's going to get this right. Mm -hmm. He realized, right when he realized that wasn't him, he said, no, I need to find my way. And then walk back, and I got to get my way back. Because mm -hmm. you know what? I don't like what I'm in right now. I don't like my current situation. Yeah. Now, I could just wallow in it and just say these are cause that I've been dealt, and I'll always be this way. But I remember how the father treated That's me. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. He knew that he was better than his situation. And God is saying to someone today, don't you know you are better than your situation? Mm -hmm. So the son devised a plan of action, a plan that involved, look at verse 18. See, this plan didn't involve, involve him just, I'm back, daddy. Mm -mm. Did you miss me? Yeah, yeah. He didn't say that. He, he had a plan. His plan was that you should be glad I'm glad I'm back. I know your people, your family talking about how you turned me out and how you, I know you talk, you should be glad I'm back. Mm. Nah, he didn't say that. He didn't just walk around coming, yeah, I'm back, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm back. He said, no, nah. I, I got to do what's right. Yeah. Yeah. He said in verse 18, you better get this. I'll arise and go to my father and I'll say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. You can come right. You can come back home. But you got to come back the right way. But if you don't know the right way, you're going to come and think, you should, I'm glad you're just thankful I'm here. And it's amazing how we think the Father just supposed to receive us just because we're just happy that you're back. He said, hold on for a minute. You better come the right way. Because my, my son didn't just die to just die. He says, my plan is that I'm going to go to my father. And I'm going to tell my father, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And against you. Last week we talked about 1 John 1 and 9. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. Can we go there? Amen. 1 John 1 and 9. This is all what he's saying here. If we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us. And to do what? Us of all, all of what? See now, now let's read that slow people of God. If we confess our sins. Listen to me. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all what? Unrighteous. Unrighteousness. He says, if. <laughs> so guess who the choice is? Guess whose choice is? It is. Guess who decision? I don't care how much preaching and messages and how many times you go pray and all this. But let me tell you something. When you sit against God, God says, you got to confess. That's right. He says, if you do it, this is what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. That you're going to do what? I'm going to, he says, I'm, first of all, you need to realize when you come to me that I'm faithful. He says, he says, I'm going to forgive you. He said, guess what? Once I forgive you, I'm not going to forgive you. Guess what I'm going to do, Ralph? I'm going to clean you up. I, 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 listen to me, church. I'm, that's where we at. See, the reason why we're still getting ready to eat the slot because we don't realize that we clean. Don't you know when you got some clean stuff, you just don't want nothing to touch it? That's right. That's right. And once it touches it, like this white robe, because I know somebody's going to put some makeup on this thing. So today, when at the church, I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> hug y'all from it. But God won't do that to us. Because you know what God said? God said, I want you to bring everything to me. Mm -hmm. right. I, I want you to bring everything to me, because you know what, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Although he don't want the stains on him, Pastor Mark, I'm going to let you know, I'll take them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mark can't handle the stains. That's why he wanted to keep this white robe clean. But I want you to understand what my, my what my son does. My son came to do what take on yeah. the sins and the stains of his world. He says, so you can come to him. And so he tells us here, 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I can hear some of y'all saying right now, Pastor Mark, the only reason why he wanted to return home is because of his destitute situation. Amen. Amen. Well, at least he that wise. At least. Come on. Come on right? Some of us are still hang out there. Yeah, that's right. Talking about self power. Mm. Yeah. Talking about self power. Mm -hmm. I could do it myself. Mm -hmm. At least he had to, mm, mm -hmm. to realize that this ain't me. Yeah. Many of us are so full of pride that we would not only eat the pig slop. We would start believing that we were pigs and start living like them before we return to God. Lord help. Wow. Mm. Because of pride. Yeah. Man, many of us are talking about, we come and let me bless this food. No, God said, I don't want you to eat that. Yeah, that's right. But we'll start justifying our rebellion to my slop. Well, I'm going to ask God to bless it and take all impurities out of it and, and clean up. God said, hold on for me. I ain't call you. I don't want you to be blessed. Ask no blessing over that. I got some something good for you here. Yeah. Listen to me, church. Don't be settling for the slop. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. He says, I got some. That's not what I want for you. I don't want you out there like that. <laughs> but, but, but because of our pride. Like he says, we will not only eat the pig slop, we'll start believing that we were pigs. Because you know that's what happens. We, we get so deep in it, we start thinking that's who we are. And so that goes to battle. Every time God talks about he loves you, when God speaks about his love, his restoration, his healing, listen to me, people of God, his redeeming power, how he can restore you. We've ate so much slop, we think it's a pig. We don't think it's, it's for us. We start thinking that's for somebody else. Because we've been eating a pig slop so much, we think we pigs. And so guess what we do? We walk around here like some crazy folk. Like the man in the, in the cemetery, cutting ourselves. Because these demons are all on us. He says, because you've been hanging around some pigs. Proverbs 16 and 18 says it like this. We talk about this pride, right? Mm -hmm. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. I told you, our pride will not only make us eat the slop, we would rather eat the slop than return to God, but it also make us think we're pigs. You ever heard of somebody say, you eat like a pig? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ever met somebody like that? This ain't scripture, this me. Some of y'all do. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but he says, he says, but because, because, because I, my pride won't allow me to return to the Father, even when I know, he says, pride goes before destruction. And we saw it in the story, right? He says, in a hearty spirit before a fall. Look at verse 18 again. Let's go to verse 18 again. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, heaven, and before you. While pride sets us on an ill-fated course, the opposite of pride is what? Humility. Which leads to what? Honor. To choose pride is to set oneself up for a fail, for a fall. To choose pride is to set yourself up for what? A fall. Are, are we not in a prideful way right now? Everybody think that they have the answer. And guess what? And I mentioned it before and I'm going to mention it again through the Holy Spirit. It is not going to get better. I don't care what they promise you. If it got, if it got better, then God is lying. That's right. That's right. The Bible said that evil man will get evil and the things will get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. He says, we need, to be, we need to be mindful of this, that guess what? It only gets better when we return mm -hmm. to the Father. Mm -hmm. So he tells us here, go to Proverbs 3 and 7. We talk about this pride, right? Look what he says, Minister Coleman. Y'all better get this. Do not be wise in your own eyes. <laughs> he said, in other words, stop thinking that you know, how to, you know how to work this thing out. Stop thinking you know how to stop. You ever met somebody say, well, I'm going to come to Christ when I stop. Let me yeah. share something with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're slopping. Right. Come on. You eat some sloppy yeah. Joes. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to get this right when I come to Christ. I'm going to get this right when I stop this. You being wise in your own eyes. Don't you know that prodigal son had to come to himself to realize that guess what? This is not who I am. Right. He says, 
I know something. Nari, he said, I can't stop it. Let me help you right quick. You can't stop sinning. Yeah, you, you can't. I can't. We can't stop it. We don't have the power to do so. Come on, sit here. We don't. We try to manage it. Mm. You can't stop it. Proverbs 3 and 7 tells us today, people of God, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and do what? Depart from what? Evil. To fear the Lord and thus avoid the pride that goes before fall is to respect, reverence, and submit to him in every area of your life. Some of us have given God some, but have yet to give them all. God says, I'm a jealous God. I don't be second to no one. Give me your all. See, when you give all to me, God says, I know what's best for you. 99 and a half won't do. He says, give all to me. Pastor Mark, let me help somebody. God said, I don't want your house. I don't want your money. And that's, that's the trick of the enemy. I don't want your house, your money. I don't want any of that stuff. Because when you leave here, <laughs> somebody else going to get it anyway. Yeah. I'm trying to let you know that your word is not wrapped up in a job, in a position, in, in, in 401ks, and none of that stuff. He said, your worth is more than that. He tells you, I want you to come to me. So look what happened in verse 19. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. How many of us are right there? Right now. I, I, listen, listen. Listen to many of us are right there right now. Mm -hmm. We right there like, I ain't worthy. I ain't worthy. And guess what Satan got us right there? No, you ain't worthy. Mm -hmm. How dare you go to church? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How dare you come to tell me you love? How dare you do that? See, the enemy is accused of the brethren, that's so right. he's always messing with our minds. Right. He always got you thinking, because see, we, that's the way, I ain't worthy. I ain't worthy. Mm -hmm. I ain't worthy. He says, I know, he said, I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to say, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Mm -hmm. He says, make me, look at, look at us. Can you see us? Because see, the world done told you Satan want to beat you down. I mean, yeah. God want to beat you down. Yeah. The world done told us, first of all, Christ is not real. God is not real. You can have any other God you want. So he tells us, he says, this is what he tells us. He says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your highest servants. Hey, isn't it a good thing God don't listen to us? That's right. Thank you, Jesus. When we repent. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it a beautiful thing that God don't listen to us? Because how many of y'all that said, Lord, just <laughs> however you Lord said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Lord, I'm just not, we do it, right? Don't we? Lord, I'm just worried. Lord, 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 hold on from this is my grace. It's my mercy. It's my love. I know you don't deserve it, but Jesus, Christ said, yeah. He said, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. So he says here, listen to me. He was willing to give up his rights as his father's son and take on the position of a servant because of what? Guilt. Mm -hmm. And what is guilt keeping you from? What is guilt telling you that you're going to always be this? He was willing, because of guilt, he was willing to what? Give up all the things he wants to enjoy to be a servant. This young man's action demonstrates true humility and true repentance, but not based on what he said, but on what he was willing to do and eventually what he acted upon. Mm -hmm. Are we there? How many of y'all say, I know I need? I ain't going to look at nobody because I don't want to... I'm going to look at the wall. Because, you know, when you start looking at people, they say, quit looking, Pastor. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm saying is, he says, how many of us know, know without a shadow of a doubt that we are not pleasing God, that we are not being obedient to God, that we are not doing what God... How many of us know that, that we're living in open rebellion because of the sin, we're saying the same thing, I'm not worthy. So we fail to act upon what the Father has said. And we stay in the I'm not worthy. And the enemy is tearing us up. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. God says, let me tell you something. Freedom is just a confession away. Yes, yes. Stop looking at what you've done. And start looking what Christ has already finished. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's, the resurrection is not so much about the date and time. 
The resurrection is about the person. And the person is Christ Jesus. That's who resurrects us. He said, but no, we are, guess where we're at, people of God? I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And many of us are doing the same thing. I don't deserve it. Don't we say that? Come on, y'all, to talk to me. I don't deserve this. The young man says he realized he had no right to claim a blessing upon return to his father's household, nor did he have anything to offer except a life of service and repentance of his previous action. With that, he is prepared to fall at his father's feet and hope for forgiveness and mercy. Amen. Verse 20 and 21 says like this. He says, look, he says, and he arose. I told you. Listen to me, Ellie. He knows what's right. See, many of us know what's right. And we sit in every Monday, every Tuesday. We know what's right. Don't you play with me. You know what's right. He said, I know I'm better than this. I know I shouldn't be in this situation. I know. He said, but look, I'm going to move from just knowing. I'm going to put some action behind it. He says, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, oh man, his father saw and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his, and the son said to him, father, look at this, look at this, come on, freedom time, Ralph. I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So why would this father of this rebellious, ungrateful, disrespectful, greedy, selfish, hard-headed, misguided child. Go out looking for him. That's what the scripture said. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that's all of us, right? I ain't even a word out there. G-rated. Hard-headed, selfish, mis He said, why would the father go out looking for him? Why? Some would think that the father should have said he made his own bed. He should lie. Mm. That's what we do, don't we? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Don't you think the father says, look, that's, he made that bed. He didn't lie. Mm. God said, that's how you think. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you how, how my love is. Mm -hmm. He says, so why would he go out? The question was, and look for him. Why? Well, the obvious answer is because he loved him. Mm -hmm. And God loves you too. And God says here, he was eager to show him some love and restore the relationship. God was eager. The father was eager to show what? His son who was in a rebellious state some love. But guess what his son had to do? He had to come back. The what? Right. The right way. So when the father, according to verses 20 and 21, when the father reaches his son, not only does he throw his arms around him, according to the scripture, but he greets him with the kiss of love. Yeah. He is so filled with joy at his son's return that he doesn't even let him finish his confession. Uh-oh. He was so great. He was so, uh, come on now. Come on. We got this long drawn out list on what we got, what we think we need to say before, yeah. the, before we go to, in order to be returned from God. We got, all, we got it all drawn out, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, please forgive me for this and for this. God said, look. Hey, y'all. <laughs> he already repented. I, I, I don't need to know what he done. Because I already know. He already confessed that what he did was wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to give me a laundry list of what you've done wrong because I already know. I just need you to confess that you've done wrong. Yes, Lord. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, now everybody else want to find out what you do. How, what you do. How, no, guys, I don't care about it. I just want to know that when you confess to me that it's godless sorrow, okay. that it's true. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, I don't need to for you to tell me what you was out there doing. I already know. I just need you to own up to it. Mm -hmm. right. Come on. Amen. Come on. He tells us here that. That the father here was filled with joy at his son's return that he doesn't even let him finish his confession, nor does he question or lecture him. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Don't we do that? Mm -hmm. He don't lecture him. He didn't. Boy, didn't I tell you? He said, no. He said, because I'm going to tell you something. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to let you know something. I'm glad you're back. He says here that he unconditionally forgives him and accepts him back into the fellowship. Without what? Explain. Because we got our you know, people speaking for us. You know, you ever, you ever got in trouble and you had your friend call your mother? Because they like your best friend. Y'all come, y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Hey, would you call mama? Yeah. She like you. <laughs> what you mean tell her? Tell her blah, 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 blah. God said, you ain't got to worry about that. Mm -hmm. He said, because you already got an advocate here. It's already in the seat. Right, that's right. And he already told me. That he, he already told me what? Mm -hmm. What did he tell me? He already told me this. Covered. 
He already told me. He already told. He said, "Cause let me tell you something. The scripture said that he left. That's right. So he knew what was right. I'm not talking to the unbeliever. I'm talking about to those of us who are at home and allow the enemy to pull us out. He says, "Let me tell you something." Verse 22 and 24 says it like this. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Uh-uh. We, 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 in the natural, how, 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 how many weeks you don't punish my kill? <laughs> you, 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 you ain't telling him. You ain't telling him. He ain't telling him. Mom, I'm sorry. You ain't telling him. Go and bring out the best. No, you're like, no, you going to get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God says, look, when you come to me truly repentant, I forgive you. He says, so let me tell you something. The reason why I can't whip you when you confess, because to whip you means I'm whipping my son. Because see, I don't see you. Mm. I see the blood. That's see, because right. you don't confess now. Yeah. And the Bible says if you confess your sins, Hallelujah. God is faithful and just to forgive you. So guess what? When you confess, he says, I'm not going to whip you because guess what? I'll be whipping my son. Uh -huh. I see the blood. But the enemy tells you, no, they're going to do all, they're going to say all this. No, God said, no, I see the blood. Uh -huh. I forgive you. And not only did he say, verse 22, he says, and he rose and he came, I'm sorry, but the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Look what he says, because his son is back. 23 says what? He says, and bring the fatted cat here and do what? Kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Look what verse 24 says. This my son was dead and is what? Alive. Alive what? Again. Somebody better say what? See, he didn't stop and say alive. He said alive again. Because that's what happens with us as the people of God. When we allow the world to entice us to go back, guess what? We die. Mm -hmm. Because sin is separate. He said because it's confession. Mm -hmm. Because the ways of sin, mm, yeah. whether you're saved or not, the ways of sin is still death. Amen. Amen. Our salvation don't give us a guarantee or warrant to go out and do whatever we want to do and live the way we want to live. Right. Yeah. He said, let me tell you something. You're going to suffer the same judgment. You're still going to pay for what you've done. Salvation is secure, but guess what? I can't let you just live any kind of way. So he tells him here, for this my son was dead and alive. He's alive. A what? Again. Then he was lost and now he's what? Found. And they began to do what? Mary. Go to Luke 15 and 10. Guess what they had, Shayla? They had a party. Yep. Let me tell you something. That, that's, what, that's what the scripture says, right? Right. He says when this person returned home to the father, after he confessed, he said right in the middle of I, what you do, I've, I've sinned against you, father. God don't say, God don't tell us, listen to me, listen to me. Priest and all them other people may say that. Tell me what you've done. God don't say that. No, that's right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. God says, I just need you to confess. That's right. You know why? Because I already know. I, I don't need them no more because the veil has been. So you can come straight to me and just confess your sin. He said, let me tell you something. And when he confessed, Sam, when he look what he said. The scripture said, they had a party. See, that's what's happened with the church. We, we, get, we get jealous when people come back home. We like other brothers. <laughs> I ain't going to get that because I ain't got time. <laughs> but many of us like other brothers. I've been all, I've been serving you all this time. Now you all excited because because Jonathan came back. <laughs> I've been with you a whole time. I've been with you a whole time, sir. And we throwing a party for him. Mm. He said, "I need to remind you something there, J Jamal." Luke fifteen and ten says, "Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Yes, over one sinner." That's right. Mm -hmm. Over one who repents. Right. I know we love those large altar calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if there's no repentance, come on, mm -hmm. that's right. There's no confession, repentance. I know we like all that. We get excited when all those people are coming down. But the Bible says it don't take all that. Mm -hmm. He says the angels of the, of God they rejoice over what one, one person. Don't you know you're that special to God? Mm -hmm. Don't you know, people of God, that the angels in heaven are waiting for you, I, for us, to do what? So they can have a party. 
Y'all know y'all used to love to party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we were saying, don't start, Ty Shaw. And don't you know heaven is waiting for you to show up so they can have a party? Yeah, 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 yeah. They waiting. You know the anticipation? You ever been to a surprise birthday party? Mm -hmm. Those of us, I surprised my wife a long time ago. She didn't know it. Yeah. And everybody in the room, listen, tell me, let's talk been there. Everybody in the room like this. They just ready. Everybody in their mind got how they gonna respond when they see it. They just like, they like this. Is, is she there yet? You can hear them. Phone text and all that. Is she there? How long? That, that's what the angels in heaven are doing right now. They wait. They like, oh, is he there? Was he here? Was she keep, is she keep? Is she there yet? No, she ain't yet. She, is he there yet? No, he ain't came yet. The angels in ready. We ready. We ready to celebrate. Yeah. We ready to praise. Yeah. You think God gave us yeah. these six wings for nothing? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come he on. He said, man, we ready to use all of them. We ready. Are they there yet? Almost. Almost. Come on now. Come on. Then, then we, as soon as they confess, pin. Bow. Yeah. They like, woo! Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the scripture. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. He says, look, they rejoice over that. Mm -hmm. And God says it like this as we wrap up. Sometimes when it comes to the prodigal sons, we are like that rebellious lost son. Thinking that our way is better than God's way. But then repenting when we finally see how wrong we are. God the Father never gives up searching for us when we're lost in sin. Somebody need to get that. And he's always ready to forgive when we truly what? Repent. So the father running to his son, greeting him with a kiss and ordering the celebration is a picture of how our Heavenly Father feels towards a sinner who repents. See, we got to understand what it means to truly repent and what is the result. It's, it should be a party Amen. in heaven. Instead of condemnation, there's rejoicing for a son mm -hmm. who had been dead but now is alive, mm -hmm. who was once lost according to the scripture but now is found. By faith in Christ, we move from receiving eternal death to eternal life. Mm -hmm. John 3, 16 and 18 says, For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. He who believes, we talked about this. Ah, it's not my outer. The angels ain't waiting for my outer man for me to dress the part. Amen. That ain't gonna throw the party. Come on, that's right. They ain't partying because I look like I'm, 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 I'm I look like I'm not confessed. Mm -hmm. You know, because I clean myself up yeah. on the outside. Yeah. yeah. He says, when I when I when I truly repent from the inside, verse 18 of John 3 says, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed, 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 believed in the name of the only begotten Son mm -hmm. of God. Now I'm fully aware that there are many religions. Who claim that they have the right way to God. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Many of them, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Many believe that they have the right way to God. But we as people of God, we who have been truly forgiven, redeemed, and restored. Those who have confessed Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, John 14, 1 and 6 says it like this. Let not your heart be troubled. See, we used to hear that in funerals. <laughs> but it's, it's, it hit differently today. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and do what? Receive you to myself, that there I am, you may be also. That where I am, you be also. And where I go, you know the way. You know it. Thomas said, we talked about Thomas, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said it like this. I am the way. Yes, sir. I am the truth. And I am the light. No one. Can somebody say no one? No one. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's talking to his children. Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Jesus Christ is the resurrection. The way, the truth, and the life. 
He is the light of the world, bringing light in the midst of darkness. He is the door and the good shepherd, bringing his protection. He's the bread of life, bringing us substance. And he's the true vine, sustaining our security. Some people may say, is that all, all I must do, Pastor Mark, is believe? That seems too simple, don't it? Yeah. Yeah, because the intellectual, we talk about in Sunday school, mm -hmm. will make you believe that there's more to that. Right. Does it seem to be too good to be true? Have you wanted a transformation in your life and now this seems to be a little too easy? That's what we say. That's just too simple. You ever witness somebody tell me, no, I got any more than that. He said, no, no, no. Maybe you made the commitment, but now you find yourself drifting and having difficulty finding your way back. Maybe you made the commitment, but now because of Randy. <laughs> I find myself drifting now because I listen to the people, they and those. <laughs> And maybe that's not you. Maybe you're confused about all the world religion. Come on now. We're here. Mm -hmm. Now maybe that's you. You're confused about all the world religion out there and just want to experience God for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, Jesus Christ is offering you a resurrected morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, he's offering it to you. And he's shown us through the prodigal son how we can receive it. Yeah. Not about what I wear and how long it is. Not how many laws and customs I keep. Not who I'm affiliated with, what culture I'm in, what color I'm in. Not all that. He says, if you confess your sin, I'm faithful and just to forgive you, to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. God is asking somebody today, will you trust me? Will you follow me? Remember, the question was asked, Do you believe? Do you believe on the name of Jesus Christ? If so, come. The prodigal son didn't wait to get himself right. Yeah. I want to encourage you to read that. Ask God to open it up to you. He didn't wait to get right. He came to himself when he realized that what he was about to do Will cause more harm than good. But remember, I said earlier, people of God, many of us are doing what? We still got a 20. It's not bad enough yet for us. And some of us are still holding on. And God is saying to you today, let go. Let go today and return back to me. He said, I've given you the perfect example in this parable. I didn't come to judge you. I didn't come to beat you down. The father went out expecting his son to return. You know why? Because he had already invested in his son what was right. The people of God, we should not stay in our sin. We should not stay in our rebellious state. When God the Father has already told us what's right. I don't care who it is. I don't care who they are and how much influence they have over your life. God says, now that you have heard my word, yeah. you can never say you don't know. Right. So the choice is ours. Let us pray. <laughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you for your word today, Lord God, the truth that's found in your word. You're calling us, Lord God. The Spirit of God is beckoning us to return home. You showed us, Lord God, the right way of returning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning as a people needing your grace. We come to you as a people needing your assurance and the hope that only you can give. For many of us saw ourselves, Lord God, in that parable. And Father God, many of us are stuck right there that you're, they're not worthy. But if they just keep reading the story, how not only that they made up in their mind that they were going to do right, but they act upon it. 
We know, Lord God, that we've all been deceived by the world. For the world outside these doors offers no grace, no hope, and no assurance. But we know that through your Son, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, we have the way. We know the way. We know the truth. And we know the life. Father God, somebody today need a resurrection. So my prayer, Lord God, is that they do exactly what the Spirit of God is telling them to do. That they will come, Lord God, and fall at your feet, confessing their sins, acknowledging, Father God, that they have fallen short of your plan for their lives. I pray, Father God, that they will come to believe the truth that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and that you raised him on the third day. I pray that they come believing that through your spirit, who is speaking to them right now, that they will experience the Father God a lively hope. Father God, I pray that they will trust you and follow your directions this morning. That they will accept you, Father God, accept your rewards. Accept the promise, Father God, that is readily available to all those who call upon you, Lord God, in faith. And Father God, we just thank you today for moving on the hearts of your children, opening up, Lord God, your word to remind us, Lord God, that when we truly confess our sins unto you, Father God, you will not only forgive us, you will not only restore us, you will not only save us, but you will give us eternal life. So today I thank you for that soul that's going to get up now and say, if I just return back, confess my sins, God the Father will forgive me. But the choice is theirs. We thank you for this time. In Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all that tuned in today. I pray that you understand that for someone out there, God is asking you to come home. But when you come, come the right way. And what is the right way? Repentance, true repentance. God made a promise that when you come, and if you come, he says he'll do what? We learned this a couple of weeks ago. That he'll release and relieve the pressure. Mm -hmm. huh, and that your sins will disappear. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? What you're experiencing now, right now, it shows you that Satan is real. Because Satan is telling you to stay in your seat. And you think that's your thought. As a matter of fact, you're thinking that's your decision. But God is still beckoning you to come. And I like how he said that he arose and got up. Father said he waited. He waited. And see, and see, sometimes when we're waiting, we're waiting. The wait. The wait. Because we read in the scripture today that Jesus did not pull out what they did wrong, did he? 
All he said was once they confessed, he asked the other ones to bring the fatty calf. And the enemy is telling you, you got to tell them, you ain't got to tell me nothing. You just got to tell God, Father God, I've sinned against you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your child. Make me a higher servant. And thank God for his love, how he stops the son and says, bring the best. Dress him up. For my son who was once dead is now alive. Can't you hear the angels? Can't you hear him rejoicing over the one? Can't you hear him rejoicing over the one? The one. See, the reason why it's hard for you and I to rejoice is we're still looking in the physical. But God says, I celebrate spiritually. Because I'm sure that, that there was someone just like there's always somebody in the world to discourage us. When we come, we need someone to stand with us. That's right. That's right. Even in the natural, to show that they're not alone. That's right. We're waiting. God is waiting on you. Yeah, he's talking to you. I told you. <laughs> uh, no, 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 stop looking around. Stop looking around. Stop the children. Close the door. Close the door because that's the enemy telling them to look other, look outside. Close it. Close it. Close it. That's a distraction. God is waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting. Hey Amen. You have told God, not today. And we talked about it earlier, and you know who he's talking to. You just told God not today. And now you will eat the pig slop. 